Hey there, my name is Mark Seitz. I'm one of the emergency clinicians here at Red Bank Veterinary Hospital at our Cherry Hill location. Today we're going to be discussing specifically the various types of e-collars and how to put them on your dog. In case you missed it, please feel free to check out our first video where we discuss why an e-collar is important and how to use it. I'm joined today by two very important helpers. The first is one of our licensed technicians, Jess, as well as my own personal dog, Sedona. So to start, we're going to discuss probably one of the most common and popular e-collars, and that's the plastic cone. There are numerous variations on the same design, but we'll start with one of the ones we carry here at our hospital. Jess is going to demonstrate how to put each e-collar on as I discuss it. So to put a plastic cone on, you want to fit it such that it's tight enough that it can't be pulled off the head, but it's still loose enough that we can get two fingers. Some use the dog's e-collar, others have straps, Ours actually has a Velcro, so it makes it really easy. So as Jess is demonstrating, we pre-fitted this one. We adjust the Velcro, and it fits on. One of the advantages to this clear one is it doesn't interfere with Sedona's ability to see. Some of the other ones that are tinted can be a little hard for them to get used to. But you can see, we can't pull it off of her, but it's still loose enough that I can get two fingers in. These are general principles that apply to all e-collars. Now, one of the criticisms of the traditional plastic cone is that they're a little bit rigid and inflexible, although they do provide the most strength as well as the best protection for animals getting to parts. Some animals just don't tolerate them well. So that's why other manufacturers have come up with other designs. So let's take a look at some of those other designs. The second type that we're going to be looking at is still a traditional cone shape, but it's soft. You can't see through this one, so sometimes they don't like that ability. However, it's a lot more flexible and therefore sometimes better tolerated, especially when animals are walking around. Jess is going to apply this one the same way, and same principles apply. This one ties into place. But again, the same rules apply. We want it loose enough to get a couple fingers in, but not so loose that it comes off. That one may have been a little too loose, so we'll be sure to tighten it for next time. All right, so let's move on to the third type. Those first two types are probably the best at protecting structures on the head, the eyes, and the ears. These next two, they work by preventing neck mobility, but their disadvantage is animals can still scratch at their neck and face. So these are probably only a good idea if you're trying to prevent licking or chewing somewhere on their body. This one is one you can find at most pet stores. It's an inflatable donut, and it simply just goes around their neck and then Velcros into place. And again, it's important to note with this one, it's designed to prevent their neck from moving to be able to get to parts of their body. But you can see Sedona's ears, her eyes are still free game. If she had a problem there, she could still get to them. So that is the one disadvantage of this type. The final type that we'll be discussing, we actually don't have Sedona size, so we won't be able to put it on her, but it's the same principle. It's called a bite knot collar, and basically it looks like a neck brace, and it's a plastic sheath designed to wrap around her neck, and when fitted properly, again, it prevents the neck from moving and touching various parts of the body. So there you have it. Those are the four main types. Although there are lots of manufacturers, usually you should be able to apply almost any type you can find by looking at those four main types. As always, if you have any questions or any concerns, please consult your local veterinary professional. Thank you so much.